want to take a look at bloom filters and bit vectors. So what's a bloom filter? Uh, bloom filter is kind of a, it's called a probabilistic data structure. There's a number of these, uh, count min sketch, random binary trees, random trees. Um, these are all kind of probabilistic data structures where in the case of a bloom filter, uh, let's say you have an impractically large amount of memory. Uh, if you wanted to store and uh, and a good example of this is like a CDN, right? So your content delivery network, right? Three quarters of all URLs accessed from a typical web cache are one-hit windows, which means they're only accessed by users once and then never again. So it'd be impractical to try and store all of that data into the web cache if it's only ever going to be accessed one time. So you can use a bloom filter to essentially have, you know, something in front say, well, if it's been accessed before, then now I'll actually cache it, right? Um, so a bloom filter will give you either the possibility that it's in the set, it's kind of like a maybe, uh, or it's definitely not in the set. And then the probability that it's in the set as a false positive, right, will increase as you insert more and more items into that bloom filter, right, until all the bits are one, uh, which is why you kind of want to maintain, you know, your error rate and your false probability probability. It, um, there's different variations of this where you can do like a scalable bloom filter, right? So typically you have multiple bloom filters, right? Data structure design store local information. Main characteristics store multiple sets in a single data structure. Uh, that's spatial, right? So scalable here is adapt dynamically to number of elements stored, minimum false probability probability. So the idea is as you increase capacity, and the you have a maximum possibility pulse positive probability right and so then you expand it based on that uh, we're not going to do any of that we're just going to create a basic one where you're just going to have a bit set or a bit array and then you'll have a number of hash functions that you'll use so uh, a couple examples here right i've added a few elements here and as you add elements like right to the bloom filter it's going to assign bits to it, you know, this definitely not in the set, right? It might be in the set because maybe the hash functions that it's run through match to one of those items in the bit array, right? Um, some hash functions, one of the more popular ones is a murmur hash. Uh, that's used in Redis, Apache Spark, InfluxDB. Chromium apparently uses hash mix, or hash mix, right? Um, so there's a, equa a couple of equations here that are relevant where you can determine the number of optimal hashes, hash functions, and the optimal number of bits to use based on an estimated number of items. So if you have an estimated number of insert elements and you have a desired false positive probability rate, then you kind of compute what an ideal number of bits to use, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to say like, well, I'm only ever going to insert um, you know, 10 elements, you know, maybe it'll spit out a number of bits that would be optimal that'll scale according to that or scale beyond that, right? So, all right, so let's look at that. So we're going to use murmur hash. That's going to be in the hash. Uh, you'll want to add that to ha fast hash in your cargo uh, dot toml, right? Um, you can also use bitvec, but we're, uh, we're just going to implement that manually here. So on the number of bits, I've already gone ahead and copied those uh, equations over. Uh, one technique, though, when you're creating primitives like this, you can actually say uh, F64 on the end of your primitive, or you can do underscore, either or. Right, we have our size, which is the estimated number. And then we got to do a cast for F64. Multiply times our false positivity rate. I'm going to do operations on it, like math operations. In some uh, some languages, you usually have like a math dot something. In Rust, typically you'll do your math operations from within on the primitive itself. Um, I mean, not in all cases, but certainly in this case. Our denominator. All right, so now we have our number of bits based on the estimated size and the false positivity rate. All right, so let's go ahead and create our bloom filter here. All 
All right, so we have two functions here. We're going one's going to be insert, the other one's going to get or check. I'm just going to turn boolean, right? All right, so pretty basic here. We're just going to iterate over the uh, number of hash functions, right? So the idea is that you run the value that you're going to insert it in the Bloom filter. You run it through a number of different hash functions, and you set each of the indexes in the bit array to uh, to one. Right? So, like I mentioned, we're going to use fast hash for this, and we're just going to use murmur three. Hash 32. We're going to pass a seed, right? So this will help kind of offset based on the index we're here using. And then you're just going to want to right, or multiply by eight because we've got a length that we're dealing with here, and then it's eight because it's the number of bits, right? So, so the position is now going to be divided by eight because each item in our bit vector is a u8, so it's a one byte. And you just or with one, shift it over. And then your position, right? So taking a look at this, our index is the bit offset, and we're shifting a one over to by, right? Our position uh, percent eight right here. So that's going to shift it over to that position as well. So that way we have the right thing. And then let's see. Yep. So that's it. So that's our insert. And then do the same thing in our Get. So same exact thing, got a position. Difference now is we have to shift one over and do an and, bitwise and, on the item in that list, right? So. Remember, if it does equal zero at any point, then we can just return false and turn true. Okay, so that is it. Now all we have to do is actually write some tests. There you go. Run our tests in here. That would make sense. Okay. Very cool. So that passes. Let's do a different variation of our test here just to make sure. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. The only thing I change here is probably everything because I wouldn't want to use the vector of U8s here. I'd prefer to use the package like uh, the crate for Bitvec. Right, so we look at that. Right. This is great because it does kind of pretty much everything you want it to do. Uh, raw slice few bits offset. We don't have to do any bitwise math. Um, but it's also really good to understand the fundamentals here. So doing bit math is important uh, if you want to at least understand what's going on. Uh, however, I just would recommend looking at bitvec for that. And then kind of optimizing your hash functions, playing things, playing with things around, playing around with things should help. Uh, but yeah, that's Bloom filters pretty much in a nutshell. Uh, if you like it, Go ahead and like it and subscribe if you haven't already. 
and I will definitely see y'all in the next one.